So today we have an Arctic Cat. It's a ZR7000. And I've got a kit here. And basically what this kit is, is we want a uh, heated seat on this machine. And this is supposed to be everything in this box to make that happen. So I guess the first step is to take the seat off. So now I've got the seat cover off. I laid a piece of cardboard down on my steel bench uh, just to kind of protect the seat cover. One thing I actually noticed in this kit, to my surprise, was a new seat cover. Uh, I did not realize it was going to come with that, or I would have gotten one that actually matched the machine. But this one here is basically black and gray, and I probably will not be using it. For anybody looking for the part number for this kit, uh, there it is right there. So I think my next step is trying to assess how I'm going to take this seat cover off and reuse it. So now I've kind of sized this thing up and I guess the next step would be uh, removing all of those little staples holding it on. I'm hoping I can just take staples off of one side, uh, slide the heating element in and do what I got to do and then pull it right back down to where it was. It's my plan. Hoping it'll work out like that. Time will tell. So one by one, tediously and carefully take these staples out, trying not to cut or poke a hole, any more holes. <laughs> in the old seat cover. I guess that is if you're going to reuse it. If you're not going to reuse it, you know, to each his own, I guess you could just cut it off, whatever you wanted to do. Whatever's fastest. So here we are, about 57 staples later. Uh, removed them clear down one side and up around the front here as well. There was just some in this area and up the side here. I'm hoping that will be enough to uh, expose everything I need to expose in order to put the element in. Now time will tell. So here we are again, I got the seat cover pulled back. I actually had to undo one of these uh, rubber cords that goes down through this hole. There is a rod that goes across the seat underneath. I had to peel back the plastic so I could get at that rod in order to unhook the, uh, the rubber cord that holds the seat down in the seam here, the little, little lip here. Um, now I'm going to read the instructions, which I probably should have done earlier, but and see uh, exact placement. I presume that this piece of uh, foam that's cut out here is for the uh, element. I noticed on the element there was a little area right here that's raised or, you know, and I presume that this will fit right down into, right into here. Your cord goes down through here. So here I'm peeling back the uh, sticky, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, adhesive to secure the element in place. Uh, being careful not to uh, put any, make sure there's no wrinkles in it, I guess, in the element so that it's on straight and hopefully uh, there won't be any problems down the road with, you know, your seat cover squishes. Maybe it would break one of these wires and cause the element to be defective or malfunction. So I noticed the seat cover that came with the kit actually has a foam on the inside of it. And anyway, I could dig there for days and not show you, but uh, it's a real thin layer of foam uh, attached to the actual seat that you're going to sit on, uh, attached on the underside of the vinyl. It wouldn't be much more than a quarter inch thick. And I believe that that is because this element will get fairly warm and could possibly melt the vinyl if it were directly placed on it. So what I have done is I have gone and cut a small piece of seat foam. It's fairly thin, it, you know, it's not high density whatsoever. And I've glued it on here and uh, my hopes is that this will act as, you know, kind of the original seat foam and uh, save the, you know, original seat cover from being uh, hurt by the element if it gets too hot. So what I'm doing is I'm using Super 77 uh, and just gluing it on. I'm 
not putting any glue directly on the element, kind of around it. I think that'll be lots. The seat cover will hold it on. It isn't going to go anywhere. It took a little bit of trial and error to make it so it, you know, half near fits. I know it's not perfect, but I don't think you'll notice it once the seat cover's on. So here I'm trying to pull the seat cover tight. It's uh, it's quite a struggle, to be honest. It's almost a two-man job, but you can manage by yourself. I don't know if I'm going to get it stapled on as neat as the factory had it, but I am going to do my best. And see the added foam I put on too is another thing that's kind of working against me, but I have got the seat cover so far right back into position that it was in before I started. So my holes are really close to where they were before. Any of these staples that aren't going in tight, I just give them a little tap and, and they seem to go right in tight, so that's good. So here we are, uh, get the seat cover back together, the foam inside. I think it turned out pretty darn good. You'd never know it was ever apart. Um, so I guess the next step, I've read the instructions. They basically want me to remove all of the plastics on this machine. Um, I need to actually cut a hole to put the switch right here about the gas tank, which I'm not excited about, but I am gonna do that. So the next step is to remove all the plastics. So the progress so far is, I got her basically stripped down. Uh, this nut around here is the most insane thing I've ever seen to get off. Very frustrating. Uh, supposedly in the kit there's a template that shows me where to cut the hole here. Of course, my kit does not have that. So, I'm going to have to do a little guessing here to figure this out. So because I didn't have a template, what I've done is I actually put the hood back on. And I'm put masking tape in the area where the switch needs to go. So now I can kind of mark the edge here. You don't want the switch in where you can't get at it just to keep it out here but i need to keep it away from this structure here there's bars that come down as you can see so there's not much of a window here like it's got basically just one small spot it can go and that's it so i'm going to try and do my best to without a template find that spot so i got my panel carefully carefully marked i measured three times i'm hoping it only cut once really don't want to screw this up um, I, you can see I've taken a small drill bit and uh, drilled it in the corners and my plan is to take one of my little saws here start it in the hole kind of connect the dots kind of thing I've actually marked the hole a little bit small I was hoping that I could file it out as needed and uh, hopefully it'll only do this one time because I've only got one shot at it so now with great success I actually got it in and I test fit it, it does seem to fit. Um, I actually cut it with this orbital tool uh, and I finished it off with a file. Just took a fair bit of filing, I had to keep it this way as much as possible. The uh, structure that comes down through here, like it is right on the side of it. There's a very small window where that can go and thankfully I found it. So the wiring connections are Right down here, there's an accessory plug. It's this one here, it actually comes with a, uh, I guess just a dead end kind of thing on it. Unplugged it. I routed my wiring up uh, beside the tank. I'm hoping it can stay here. Uh, it seemed like the harness is way too long, but wrapped it around here a few times over to my switch. And then routed them right down alongside this uh, spire structure back for my seat. Now if everything works out, I'm gonna leave it in this position. Uh, I actually have another sled here to look at and it actually kind of goes up over, I see there's wiring goes under here, but it's all wrapped inside of a heat protective material. And of course this harness does not have it. So I'm scared of it melting. So I'm hoping that I can keep it kind of back here on the back side of the gas tank. The instructions tell you to put it under the tank and back to the battery connection, which I don't know if that Part of the instructions got switched with another set but it would be the only thing under the gas tank and I'm thinking it would chafe like crazy and, and I don't believe there's enough wire for that so 
Anyway, this is what I'm going to try, and hopefully it works. So here we are. I got it back together. I left just enough so that you can basically take the seat up, unhook this connection here, and uh, remove the seat if needed. Everything seemed to work out great up front. Uh, the wires fit behind that plastic panel in the gas tank. The switch, as you can see, just fit perfectly, just like it was meant to be there. So now the sled is back together. It's 100% complete. Uh, basically, my goal was to get this in and never know it was touched or basically never know that it didn't come with it from the factory. And I think we have achieved that goal. Um, I don't see any real flaws in the whole, the whole project. Uh, other than the instructions were a little vague and the seat cover that came with it. Anyways, I guess I could have had a new seat cover had I known that there was going to be one come with it and I could have ordered one in the right colors. But anyway, uh, I'll have a spare to sell or who knows, maybe they even put on this sled if something were to happen to it. But that's it for now. Have a good day.